Thank you so much. Actually, I'm very glad to have been here this morning listening uh, to the several presentations and also have the opportunity to contribute from this panel um, saying something that unfortunately is probably not going to be new because the first uh, impression I have is that we are a bit preaching to the convinced. I mean, we are uh, more or less all agree with what we say, uh, which, is, which is good. With creating community means also to set up this kind of uh, network that is going to be useful in order to change some policies. Uh, since I am a member of the parliament that was uh, from the 2004, I've participated in two big debates. Um, one was uh, in the last mandate when we negotiated uh, a big and important resolution uh, on the, where we asked for first time the European Roma strategy. The second one was in 2011 when we already established the seven priorities and the three objectives for this strategy. So what we understood of this period is that uh, the European Parliament has uh, at least a role divided in two areas. One is to scrutinize the Commission, uh, being sure that it does not sideline the major important uh, uh, well, decisions that have to be taken in order to avoid both discrimination and bad treatment of uh, and obviously impunity of the Roma population. But secondly, and that's probably more important, that's what uh, also Desiderio mentioned, uh, is asking for some types of sanction. I mean, the worst it can happen in these situations is impunity. Uh, in the panel before lunch, uh, uh, when Andre Liske mentioned the impunity that some even politicians had when they uh, simply created these stereotypes, which in fact conducted to the racism, um, what he showed is that, as it was mentioned, is not only a question of having good laws and having good papers, but is also a question of having good judicial system that will prosecute those who are vulnerating the principles, not only the law itself, but the principles behind these legislations. And that's would also somehow mention uh, a bit George Soros this morning when he said it's good that we can take this opportunity in order to uh, rethink on why the European Union was created for. The Roma issue can be used as an opportunity to remind ourselves that the origin itself of the European Union was to create a community of values. The question is why, when we have this institution work or no set of institutions working, we have forgotten about one of the major groups inside the European Union that has been discriminated in many fields. That's one of the pillar questions that we have to confront with. And that's what we as European Parliament have to be very clear when we put this on the table. It's a question of mobility, yes. It's a question of social housing, education, uh, health rights, of course. And this is something that goes, in terms of the sharing of power, to the national governments or to the member states. Fair enough. I am pro-European, and most of these issues I would like to see also the European frame. But so far, this is the situation. However, the discrimination issues, the question that has to be with the discrimination related to the equality directive, in one side, and the equal treatment in the employment directive in the other side as something that the European Commission as such needs to be taken into account very seriously. There is another directive, the horizontal directive of the multiple discrimination outside the employment sphere that we are just trying to develop and is still blocked in the Council. We will see how we manage this. But we have still already enough framework in order to deal with those issues, as it was mentioned uh, before. The European Parliament can basically do three, do three things. Supervise the national strategies. That's something that is not a minor issue. I mean, we need to have a common approach from the different groups on how some national, uh, strategy, national, uh, national strategies are 
being drafted, and most importantly, being implemented. The second issue is uh, to include that in this process, the Roma people is part of it. And that's not a minor issue. Within the parliament and within the European institutions themselves. I mean, this is important in the sense that uh, obviously there is a lot of experience and expertise behind this. And we cannot neglect um, all this uh, knowledge uh, and uh, savoir faire. And there is also a third important task that we as Parliament can do, which is the uh, fight against all those member states that sometimes even on the legislative way, but other times in simply the political speech are creating a frame, are creating a mood, are creating an attitude that is dealing with the impunity of uh, racism against against uh, the Roma population. And this is something that can be done. Maybe sometimes it's not going to be something that we can put to the International Court of Justice. Well, sometimes we will can. Sometimes we can do this, and we have to do this. But if this is not the case, at least politically. Politically, we have, to, we have the responsibility to do this. And sometimes I'm glad that uh, uh, I see the Commission taking some risks in some issues sometimes even before their own competences, which I respect and sometimes even I admire. But on the other side, on some specific issues, the, uh, let's say, uh, the uh, artificial helmet and a shelter of that this is a national matter is more an excuse to avoid some controversial debate than to take the issue on uh, its substance on itself. Finally, because I don't want to take uh, any longer uh, of your time, uh, but I think that there are at least some conclusions that we can draw up from the debate this morning, at least that I draw up from the speeches this morning and probably of the analysis of the, uh, let's say, document we are working on. The first one, uh, if not all, a big part of the problem has to do with money. And that's, that's a fact. That's a fact. With uh, needed money, uh, in the sense that we need to invest, as it was said in many occasions, in some programs that are dealing with non-discrimination and also uh, equal rights uh, for uh, all populations, including the Roma, but also the bad perception some groups are using in order to impede some member states to spend money on some issues because of their, let's say, uh, presumptions and uh, racist point of view. And we are listening this to some political groups in all, if not all, in some member states. We call them extreme bribes or whatever you wanted to call them. So that's something that we cannot exclude. Of course, it's a question of money, but to invest in the right things, in the right places, in the right moment, and not to use the crisis as an excuse for not doing this uh, uh, programs that need to be done, I insist, in order to implement these national strategies. Because we can have very good national strategies, but if there is no money to implement them, I mean, that means nothing. And that's something that we have to uh, have in mind uh, in, a, in a very responsible way. The second thing uh, is how do we deal with the discrimination issues as a general concept? Um, when you read the treaties of the European Union, uh, there is a set of, uh, let's say, questions on, 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 on types of uh, discrimination. Why some are more important than others? Discrimination is discrimination. And obviously, in some cases, we have to uh, uh, deplore the fact that according to your, uh, let's say, ideological point of view, the fact that some group is discriminated, if it's not a group that you are sympathetic with, well, is less problematic. And that's what, in legal, juridical, and institutional terms, should be completely unacceptable. And that's something that we can, as Parliament, put into a question. And finally, there is a, a well, complex issue, but it's important to um, fill in this gap 
generated for the directive of free movement uh, that uh, actually uh, it has created a lot of uh, confusion uh, in the member states uh, and when we, for instance, had the discussion uh, some days ago on uh, whether uh, Romania and Hungary could be part of the Schengen and so on, I mean, we had to put this into the table in order to remind that, uh, well, if some countries were good enough to join the market of the European Union, they should be considered good enough as well to be part of the uh, common zone of free movement for people. And that's something that if we forget when we talk about the European Union, we will simply fail as common values, as common ground, and as common goals. This having said, I think that the European Parliament have a major role to play, not alone, of course, but at least uh, in the sense that several groups can agree and must agree on basic things. As long as these basic things are clear, the Parliament can play a decisive role, I insist, scrutinizing the Commission, but also putting pressure on the member states that are the ones that so far have more capacity than us to do such things. Thank you so much.